the, the documentary is called George Shelley Learning to Grieve. Yeah. It's on uh, BBC Three on, on iPlayer right now. Mm -hmm. did, did you approach them with the idea of doing the documentary? How did it come about? Not at all. So, like, towards the end of last year, I was um, in a really, like, rubbish place. And um, I needed to get out of that. And I think the first thing I did was with Stacey, actually. We, we hosted right, yeah, X Factor. We did yeah. some bits on X Factor. And that was like dipping my toes back into work, seeing if I was um, ready to do it. Yep. Because, you know, I didn't want to go straight back into it fast. And um, coming out, my, my sister's birthday was Christmas Day. So it was like getting oh. past Christmas for us as a family was mm. really like testing. And um, yeah, we just went in for a meeting with BBC Three to discuss going on like panel shows, just like seeing what was available. Sure. And I sat down in front of them and they were like, uh, how are you? What's going on? What's, what's been going on? And I just spoke for like an hour. <laughs> I was like, this has happened, this has happened. And they were, they just said, your story's like mental. Like, this, mm. is, this is a crazy, what, what's happened to you is intense. And what you've done to deal with it um, is uh, the right thing. It could have been the wrong thing. Yeah. I was doing the wrong thing for like a very long time. Sure. And um, they just said, Come, do you mind if we share your story? Um, what were you doing that you would say was the wrong thing? Uh, escaping. It's and escapism. Away. Mm. Yeah, it was escapism, mm. denial, and um, there was like a period for like two, three months where I just didn't want to leave the flat and um, like agoraphobia going towards mm. the front door and like even thinking about it now, like it's sure. just like. Argh. Were you angry that your sister mm. had been taken just in without any warning? Yeah, and that's the thing. She was only twenty-one, so um, it was her whole future that we were grieving as well, and. Can I, can I just say to bit, maybe those of you who, who don't know how your sister died, basically yeah. she was crossing the road and she was, she was hit yep. by a car. She was just um, innocently on a night out in Bristol and she was crossing the road. I think she needed a wee, so she was just innocent. And the car was driving at 20 miles an hour, wasn't speeding, so, you know, it wasn't any, anyone's fault. But what happened is she just, it just brushed past her, she fell back and she hit her head in two places, one um, on the bus and then another on the floor. And yeah, well, she was in ICU for a week and yeah. my whole family just stuck together and supported each other. George, so. you said you were in a really dark place and mm. obviously that's totally understandable, but going through the documentary and going through that process mm -hmm. with your family, mm -hmm. do you think that was kind of like, has, has saved you sort of in terms <laughs> of actually, you know, coming to terms with it? Yeah, like the dark place doesn't, I don't really show loads of that part because I don't want to really remember it too much. Yeah. But um, mm. it's that anger and the reason that I was getting so angry and letting it out on like, inanimate objects and myself was because I wasn't processing the grief properly. Yeah. And it's like denial, anger, first two stages of grief. Yeah. Um, and because I wasn't processing it and talking about it and understanding why I was feeling angry and finding ways of moving forward with coping mechanisms and stuff, that's why I was letting it out. And what the documentary has done for me is it's helped me learn how to talk about it yeah. and learn how to you know share experiences with other people i meet other i meet i go to a siblings retreat and um there's like siblings there who have lost their brothers and sisters one girl she went four months after losing her brother and then another girl was there four years after yeah. so it was really eye-opening for me to sit there and be like wow you're you're teaching everybody like the right literacy how you can communicate the emotions properly and everybody just understood and was on the same level with everything yeah and um it's just, like I said, it's a big circle of help. And because you're talking, you're processing it yeah. and not shutting off. And that escapist period, I mean, like, escapism is, I was turning to, like, locking myself away and, like, playing video games and, yeah, like, drinking a couple of drinks and, like, that, it, that's the downward spiral. But and your, you can... Your sister was somebody that you were so close to. She mm. would have been the person you would have talked to spoken to about mm -hmm. what you were going through and she wasn't there. Mm -hmm. the, you, you don't want to beat yourself up too much about the fact that that's how you dealt with grief, because I guess it, lots of people experience it and then deal with it mm. completely differently. Exactly, and if you don't know how to like talk about these things, yeah. and the thing is with, with young men especially, you get yeah. like, if you're afraid mm -hmm. of being mm -hmm. called a wuss or being told to man up. Yeah, but isn't, it, isn't it interesting that the biggest killer of men under 45 is suicide. And 100%. men who are totally incapable of telling 100%. somebody else about how they're feeling. And then within that figure, it's um, just under a quarter of the people under the age of 24 yeah. Yeah. who have committed suicide, have suffered a bereavement and maybe not known how to talk about it. Was and this like, something that ever crossed your mind? I mean, like, yeah, I was in a really... It, I don't want to say, like, 
the words. The words, because yeah. I don't even want to think that myself. But um, it was, it was, I wasn't, I wasn't well, and yeah. um, that's the honest truth of it. I was seeing a therapist pretty much as soon as we lost Harriet, and um, he recommended antidepressants three times. Um, each time was like, you really should maybe consider this now. And by the third time, he was like, like this was, this is it. And like, these are going to really help you. Come on, George. And I was afraid. Yeah. I was afraid of, you know, what people would think of me for being on antidepressants. You know, but I mean, they're going to they think not? I'm weak. Yeah, exactly. It's illogical, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. But they, um, well, by the third time, I um, I accepted it, and I just, it's part of it, acceptance. Yeah. Understanding what you're going through, and I'm um, learning that these things are just there to help you for that time being. Like, you break your leg, you get given crutches Absolutely. until your leg heals. Yeah. So if you go through a bereavement or if you're suffering with any mental illness, this is the medication and the support with um, medical professionals. It's there to help you until you're at a level you can get better. Like, clears the path. Now you. you're going to help so many it's people. exactly what I was going to say. It helps so many people. And the, Weird. I, I said it before, and I'll, I'll say it again. The documentary George Shelley Learning to Grieve is uh, on BBC, uh, the BBC Three via the iPlayer. It's on now. Thank you so much. Thank you. George. For Thank